he said, ask questions about what you're working on. So the thing that I'm working on, I, I OSCE three, that's um, yeah. one of the things I would like to get. And uh, obviously you gotta have three certs to do that. And I've actually dabbled in the pen 300 course. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've struggled with that pen 300 course. And I yeah. passed OSCP on my first try OSCP. It was hard, but it wasn't, I didn't fail a bunch of times like a lot, some people do. And um, you know, I, I thought OSCP, like everything that that was being taught was, it, it was just, it made a lot of sense to me, but then moving on to pen 300, it was like a whole another level. So my question is, you know, someone like me who has OSCP and they're trying to get the OSEP or an, another mm -hmm. one of those 300 level certifications, can they use the same techniques and the same training method to get those higher level or do they need to like engage in like another level of thinking or take the course a different approach a course differently how what do you think about that yeah so that's a it's a good question and i i wouldn't say i had to do too much different and i'll actually say that for me when i took on the ocp i failed it twice <laughs> for for those of you that have failed it i failed it twice um because i started from zero like i I was just like, I, I want to do this for a living. I think it's really cool. I never thought that I could do something bad for a good cause. <laughs> you know, like I didn't know I could hack into something for, for good and that be legal and cool and actually help people. Um, so I was like, I want to do this. And I saw the OSCP. I saw the challenge of it. It was definitely the apex predator at the time when I took it as far as pen testing certs. And um, so when I started with that, I, I really had very few, um, very little technical knowledge in even less experience, actual practical experience. Um, so I would like find a couple blogs of like, okay, hacking WPA2 or, you know, something like that. And I would try to follow those through, follow through with those. But um, I just dove in. I just like jumped head, head first in. And, you know, I was up to like 2 a.m., you know, learning about Linux and the different file permissions for exploiting, you know, local privilege escalation vectors and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I had to work really, really hard. And uh, just a, a quick tip, I mentioned that I failed it twice. I always recommend just take it if you're in the process for any of these exams, just take it even if you don't um, think you'll pass, take the exam anyway, because you'll gain just as much experience taking the exam as, you know, spending a week studying or something, because it will help you get familiar with the exam environment. It will help you understand what level of challenge it is, and it will help you see where your weaknesses are, and then you can feed that into your, your training. Um, but this is a, my roundabout way of saying I had to work really hard for OSCP. And then I started working in the industry and picking up a lot other skills where the other ones were very challenging, but I, I didn't, I, I had a much better foundation at that point. And so I could draw upon these other experiences and um, skill sets that I had to, to work for. So, so it was it was definitely a different, for, for my personal journey, it was a lot different in that um, I had experience that I could draw on for those three, you know, higher level ones versus OCP where I had nothing. And it was kind of like struggling in the dark, you know, for me, especially at the beginning there. So um, as far as OSEP, um, OSEP is, is I, I find it's a very valuable and, and great certification. It's a fantastic next step if your goal is to, to do network penetration testing. Um, I would also pair that with the, the CRTO uh, for a non offsec cert because it's more red team focused and Pen300 is specifically penetration testing focused, but they're not advanced. None, neither of those are advanced. They don't really touch uh, EDR evasion. It's, it's really kind of old school AV, uh, especially for the Pen300 and so um, when, as we're developing content for the ATA course, we're actually covering more EDR and stuff because there's not a pen test I've been on in the past couple of years that hasn't had in, um, an EDR that I've had to fight. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely becoming the, the, the common target there. But any, anyways, more to your, to your question, to try to bring this back to what you were saying, um, I found with the pen 300 material, if you go through all of the content and you start building your tool sets as you're going through it, by the time you hit the end, if you go through the labs, you'll do fine on the exam. I actually found that the Pen 300 exam was one of the easier ones, but that also came from my perspective of, I had been doing network pen tests for three or four years at that point. So it was a lot more second nature. The harder one for me was the OSWE because I was not a developer. There was a lot of code to review. 
I'm like you had to learn to debug um, different development environments. That one I had to work a lot harder for, but it was very rewarding. And then with OSED, that one also was a little bit different of a situation because I had to work really hard to pursue the OSCE, the old, ye old OSCE, um, that covered a lot of binary exploitation. And so most, I'd say about 80% of the topics in OSED were covered in the old OSCE, if that makes sense. So um, because I had to work so hard for that, again, that was kind of similar to the, the OSCP where I didn't know anything about low-level Windows binary exploitation or user mode exploit development or anything like that. I had to work very hard at that. So by the time I got to OSED, it was, you know, the muscle memory had already been established for a lot of that. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know if that helps or if that really answers your question or if you have any follow-ups on that. I know I, I jumped around a bit there. Yeah. So, I mean, you, like you said, um, you said you did some more network penetration testing. So maybe for me, it's maybe I just need to be in the field a little bit more and do some real world pen tests. And then I can kind of put it all together because, you know, I went through the pen 300 twice and um, I went to the first challenge and I got the first flag. And then after that, I was like, I have no idea yeah. what I'm doing here. Yeah, it, it's definitely hard. And um, like you said, um, you know, I think that's good advice too. Uh, you know, taking the, the exam, even if you're not all that ready for it. 